The only real reality is the one that's right in front of you now. So I wrote a thread the other day that uh, performed very well on Twitter and uh, I thought I would share it with you here. Give a little bit more nuance because uh, I think it's very pertinent to individuals who are between 20 and 30 years old and essentially how to get ahead of the competition some of your peers around that uh, around that age group so here's how to get ahead of the masses as a 20 to 30 year old bro so first things first um, we've got to quit with the pornography now this is something that i talk about extensively in the channel here and it's one of those things where there's a real neurochemical detriment to engaging in this kind of material i mean that it fries your reward centers your dopamine sensitivity so one of the big problems that a lot of guys are having when they're trying to create a business or create a new habit that's going to be conducive to their quality of life in the future is that they find themselves picking these things up but getting bored of them very very quickly and that's because their dopamine centers are so fried by being addicted to some of the material that is out there on the internet that they don't have that sensitivity anymore to some of these novel tasks i mean do you think that somebody addicted to crack is really going to find any joy in writing a book or creating a piece of music? No. And the reason is because their system is so addicted to that external stimuli that they're never going to reap that amount of joy and pleasure through those you know, less sensitive tasks. So once you begin to remove a substance which... Um, if you're interested a little bit more about this is there's a great book called your brain on porn by gary wilson that basically shows that the neurochemical reaction uh, inside the brain when you're watching explicit material is the same as cocaine and heroin so you have to ask yourself the question um is the strongest version of you watching that kind of material and you'll notice when you begin to refrain and remove that from your life you'll find more joy more pleasure in some of the things that you might have found boring before so that's that's uh, all that i'll say on that part but there's plenty of other videos on that subject matter uh, number two is choosing your pain so i i did a video on this specifically but this is a lesson from the buddha itself which basically tells that pain is going to be inherent in the human existence and there's no escaping it you might think that starting that business quitting your job or going in a new direction in your life is going to be better for you and it might be but that particular task is going to come with an element of pain in it and that is again inherent in everything you do so you have to instead of choosing what you would like to do i think it's a better question and more interesting question to ask yourself what can you tolerate see as somebody who is uh, you know self-employed a sole trader i have to find clients and that is a little bit painful for me but I can tolerate that pain as opposed to, you know, adhering to a strict schedule, a nine to five and a boss who, again, makes my life hell. So that is my particular pain. And you can extrapolate to things like exercise, choosing your pain for, from exercise and not choosing a slow death of, uh, you know, slowly deteriorating over time. Number three is sit in silence. This is the antidote to a lot of the um, pain and suffering cause in modern western culture i wouldn't say pain and suffering what can lead to that i would say more addiction addiction to sensation and we're filled with you know notifications here and there from the phones from the computers from the laptops and the thought process the intellect is always stimulated and this is very taxing on your nervous system and you actually have a kind of uh, a bandwidth for how much your your attention is allowed to be scattered going back to that first point of you know why we can't continue to execute on tasks that are going to be beneficial in the long run is because our bandwidth is stretched too much so a really really valuable thing for you to do would be to just sit still for 20 minutes a day focus your attention on a meditative ob object it could be your breath it could be um uh, like a flame like a candle it could be uh, a piece of music like binaural beat something like that just exercise your ability to focus your your and, and narrow your bandwidth on one thing and you'll notice you're better able to execute on tasks every single day 
um, writing is the remedy to the mind. So one of my most high rate on you know return habits has to be writing. Getting a writing habit, um, not just in terms of creating a business and content and material such as this one. Uh, this is unscripted, but I wrote I wrote the thread. Um, I mean, this thread brought me some income as I plugged you know, a course underneath it after it reached X amount of people. But this is more directed towards coping with anxiety and depression. And again, this incessant internal dialogue that just never seems to come down. And the way that you get in between that and slow that process down is by writing because it forces you again to narrow your focus on one particular thought train and then bring it to a favorable end and quelling some of the overthinking and stressful thoughts that run rampant when we're trying to get to bed. So journaling, writing before bed is excellent if this is something that you particularly have challenges around. Um, eating too much. It's, it's a, interesting how there's a common theme here about um, overindulging in these kind of things. And that's why I find fasting such a uh, topical, um, practical point in the place that we find ourselves in now. Because we're always overindulging in you know, information like we spoke about previously, but also in food. And uh, I wrote a book on fasting two years ago about how giving yourself a little bit of a break, your digestive system a break, could provide you that much needed mental clarity when focusing on some of the tasks, especially earlier on through the day. So I'm a big fan of only eating between the hours of 1 p.m. and uh, about 7 p.m. And this way you free up that energy that would otherwise be used for digestion, peristalsis. It takes energy to digest your food. Not a lot of people are privy to that information, but it's muscular contractions that require energy. And you might better be able to free up some of that energy for cognitive function when you need to get shit done in the early hours of the morning. Um, consume intentionally. If you are a creator, if you're thinking about bringing something to the world that's gonna be valuable, you have to first consciously understand that what you're taking in from the world is going to color what you put out. So consume intentionally. If the input is poor, the output is equally be, gonna be so. Um, I like to do this exercise once in a while, but I'll have a look at what I've been consuming in my um, history. Um, such as you know what YouTube videos I've been watching, what um, uh, maybe uh, eBooks I've been reading on Gumroad or uh, on Audible, Audible on Kindle, and things like that, and just ask myself, you know, is this is this material doing um, uh, being conducive to my greatest vision? And the answer is no, and you can get rid of it. Um, and last but not least, uh, tomorrow never comes. Time is an illusion. The only thing that is really real is the uh, moment in front of you now. This is the first lesson that I learned that kind of slingshotted me into the direction I am now with providing value and um, you know tapping into elements of my higher self is that the only real reality is the one that's right in front of you now. So be present with it. We can always be taken away by our thoughts or lost in our feelings and if you surrender to the moment in front of you, you won't go far wrong. The tricky part is you have to let go of the wheels and kind of give yourself over to the divine plan or divine intuition. And that can be very, very scary, especially for the ego. And we live in such an egotistical world. We want to control every moment of, the, of our interactions and our future. But um, a great book is called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And he offers such fantastic utility in the practice of just surrendering to the moment that comes in front of you um, without listening to the ego. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to do that. And uh, if you do so, you'll be in for the most entertaining ride of your life that I can guarantee. So gentlemen, uh, I hope this video was valuable. We're nearly at 100,000 followers on Twitter, which is crazy now that i think about it so if you're here from twitter i appreciate you greatly i'm uh, trying to put a lot of work in this year to bring the youtube channel um, up to a, a similar and respectable amount um and 
yeah, I appreciate all of you. I hope it brings you some value, something to meditate on deeply this afternoon. And um, hopefully I'll bring you something else very, very soon. So you take care, gents.